Today I just want to teach you acute limb ischemia. The management of acute limb ischemia is very important. You might have seen this scenario so many times and you might have heard about this. There are many candidates, they score 12. I'm going to tell you how you can score 12 marks out of 12. So acute limb ischemia is a surgical emergency. You need to focus on the management. The management is very important in this patient. We follow A, B, C, D, E protocol. That is the important point. We always go straight to the patient and start talking to the patient. If the patient needs any painkiller, give them the painkiller. If the patient is okay to tolerate, then you can carry on your assessment. However, you need to assess the patient following the A, B, C, D, E protocol. There is no doubt, there is no question whether you should go to the leg or go to the patient and start A, B, C, D, E. The important thing in this scenario is that the patient can develop pulmonary embolism. Anyone who has developed a clot in the leg, it means that the patient is prone to develop the clots and the patient may also develop a clot in the in the lungs and may die from the pulmonary embolism. So it is important that you follow A, B, C, D, E. Okay, so after you have done that, you need to manage the patient. When you should be able to follow, when you should be able to diagnose acute limb ischemia, that is another question. So the answer to that is you should identify the acute limb ischemia in C. There should not be any delay. So when you go in C, you need to examine the patient all the peripheral pulses including both radials and both dorsal spedis arteries. And if there is any absent dorsal spedis artery, it means the patient is likely to have acute limb ischemia. Stop there, check the sensations, check the power and check the level where you find the pulse and establish that level so that you can refer the patient to the relevant specialty. Before you refer, it is important that you start the patient on IV heparin infusion, 5000 units stat. Then followed by 20,000 units infusion of unfractioned heparin over next 16 hours. The patient will require the CT angiogram depending upon the stage of their acute limb ischemia. If the stage is stage 1 or 2A, the patient can have CT angiogram. However, if the patient has a stage 2B, then it is possible this is plus minus. The patients who are stage 3, they do not require CT angiogram because delaying for the CT angiogram may cause the progression of the clot. The patient may need longer or the higher level of amputation because the leg is already dead. So it is important that you understand the classification. We have given details of the classification, Rutherford classification of acute limb ischemia in our notes. If you go back and you watch, you read that, you will identify and you will know what the stages are of acute limb ischemia. Now talking about in particular to the management, this patient requires first of all to be started on IV infusion and needs a pain control. This patient also needs IV heparin 5000 units stat followed by 20,000 units in next 16 hours okay then you do other uh, other investigations that include um, doing uh, CBC 
or full blood count we call FBC UNEs LFT CRP coagulation profile and so on do not ever do not ever forget to get the group and save and because a patient is likely going to go to theater and they may need the blood transfusion especially when you are putting the patient on IV heparin infusion there is a higher risk that the patient will bleed a lot so preemptively do all those measures then you refer the patient to the relevant specialty which are interventional radiology team and it is a vascular surgeons and trauma and orthopedics that's important so in summary this patient requires quick assessment starting from A to E and the patient requires C ECG 12 lead ECG he needs uh, IV heparin infusion he needs uh, uh, full blood count, UNEs, LFTs, CRP, coagulation profile, group and save, intervention, radiology, vascular surgeons, and trauma and orthopedic. It is important that you keep the patient ill by mouth with the view that the patient will require operation. And if you continue feeding the patient, it will delay the surgery and the disease may progress it may even can be life-threatening so it is important that you keep those points in your mind whenever you uh, go for your exam and if you see such scenario you can score maximum marks thank you